Book 10, The Book of the Double Twilight Canto 2, The Gospel of Death and Vanity of the Ideal Then pealed the calm, inexorable voice, abolishing hope, cancelling life's golden truth, fatal its accent smote the trembling air. That lovely world swam thin and frail, most like some pearly evanescent farewell gleam on the faint verge of dusk in moonless eve. Prisoner of nature, many visioned spirit, thought's creature in the ideal's realm enjoying thy unsubstantial immortality, the subtle, marvelous mind of man has feigned. This is the world from which thy yearnings came. When it would build eternity from the dust, man's thought paints images, illusion rounds, prophesying glories it shall never see, it labors delicately among its dreams. Behold this fleeing of light-tasseled shapes, aerial raiment of unbodied gods, a rapture of things that never can be born, hope chants to hope, a bright immortal choir. Cloud satisfies cloud, phantom to longing phantom, lean sweetly, sweetly is clasped or sweetly chased. This is the stuff from which the ideal is formed. Its builder is fought, its base the heart's desire, but nothing real answers to their call. The ideal dwells not in heaven, nor on the earth, a bright delirium of man's ardor of hope, drunk with the wine of its own fantasy. It is a brilliant shadow's dreamy trail. Thy vision's error builds the azure skies. Thy vision's error drew the rainbow's arc. Thy mortal longing made for thee a soul. This angel in thy body thou callst love, who shapes his wings from thy emotions use in a ferment of thy body has been born, and with the body that housed it, it must die. It is a passion of thy yearning cells. It is flesh that calls to flesh to serve its lust. It is thy mind that seeks an answering mind, and dreams a while that it has found its mate. It is thy life that asks a human prop to uphold its weakness lonely in the world or feeds its hunger on another's life. A beast of prey that pauses in its prowl, it crouches under a bush in splendid flower to seize a heart and body for its food. This beast thou dreamst immortal and a god. O human mind, vainly thou torturest an hour's delight to stretch through infinities long void and fill its formless, passionless gulf, persuading the insensible abyss to lend eternity to perishing things and tricks the fragile movements of thy heart with thy spirit's faint of immortality. All here emerges born from nothingness, encircled it lasts by the emptiness of space, a while upheld by an unknowing force, then crumbles back into its parent knot. Only the mute alone can forever be. In the alone there is no room for love, in vain to clothe love's perishable mud, thou hast woven on the immortal's borrowed loom, 
the ideal's gorgeous and unfading robe. The ideal never yet was real made. Imprisoned in form, that glory cannot live. Into a body shut, it breathes no more. Intangible, remote, forever pure, a sovereign of its own brilliant void, unwillingly it descends to earthly air to inhabit a white temple in man's heart. In his heart it shines, rejected by his life, immutable, bodiless, beautiful, grand and dumb, immobile, on its shining throne it sits. Dumb it receives his offering and his prayer. It has no voice to answer to his call, no feet that move, no hands to take his gifts. A aerial statue of the nude idea, virgin conception of a bodiless God. Its light stirs man, the thinker, to create an earthly semblance of diviner things. Its huge reflection falls upon man's acts. His institutions are its cenotaphs. He signs his dead conventions with its name. His virtues don the ideal sky robe and a nimbus of the outline of its face. He hides their littleness with the divine name. Yet insufficient is the bright pretense to screen their indigent and earthy make. Earth only is there and not some heavenly source. If heavens there are, they are veiled in their own light. If a truth eternal somewhere reigns unknown, it burns in a tremendous void of God. For truth shines far from the falsehoods of the world. How can the heavens come down to unhappy earth or the eternal lodge in drifting time? How shall the ideal tread earth's dolorous soil where life is only a labor and a hope, a child of matter, and by matter fed, a fire flaming low in nature's grate, a wave that breaks upon a shore in time, a journey's toilsome trudge with death for goal. The avatars have lived and died in vain. Vain was the sage's thought, the prophet's voice. In vain is seen the shining upward way. Earth lies unchanged beneath the circling sun. She loves her fall and no omnipotence her mortal imperfections can erase. Force on man's crooked ignorance heaven's straight line or colonize a world of death with gods. O traveler, in the chariot of the sun, high priestess in thy holy fancy's shrine, who with a magic ritual in earth's house worshipest ideal and eternal love. What is this love thy thought has deified, this sacred legend and immortal myth? It is a conscious yearning of thy flesh. It is a glorious burning of thy nerves a rose of dream splendor petaling thy mind, a great red rapture and torture of thy heart. A sudden transfiguration of thy days, it passes and the world is as before. A ravishing edge of sweetness and of pain, a thrill in its yearning makes it seem divine, a golden bridge across the roar of the years, a cord tying thee to eternity. And yet how brief and frail, how soon is spent this treasure wasted by the gods on man, this happy closeness as of soul to soul, 
this honey of the body's companionship this heightened joy this ecstasy in the veins this strange illumination of the sense if satyavan had lived love would have died but satyavan is dead and love shall live a little while in thy sad breast until his face and body fade on memory's wall where other bodies other faces come when love breaks suddenly into the life at first man steps into a world of the sun in his passion he feels his heavenly element but only a fine sunlit patch of earth the marvelous aspect took of heaven's outburst the snake is there and the worm in the heart of the rose a word a moment's act can slay the god precarious is his immortality he has a thousand ways to suffer and die love cannot live by heavenly food alone only on sap of earth can it survive for thy passion was a sensual want refined a hunger of the body and the heart thy want can tire and cease or turn elsewhere or love may meet a dire and pitiless end by bitter treason or wrath with cruel wounds separate or thy unsatisfied will to others depart when first love's joy lies stripped and slain a dull indifference replaces fire or an enduring habit imitates love an outward and uneasy union lasts or the routine of a life's compromise where once the seed of oneness had been cast into a semblance of spiritual ground by a divine adventure of heavenly powers to strive constant associate without joy two egos straining in a single leash two minds divided by their jarring thoughts two spirits disjoin forever separate thus is the ideal falsified in man's world trivial or somber this illusion comes life's harsh reality stares at the soul heavens are adjourned flees into bodiless time death saves thee from this and saves satyavan he now is safe delivered from himself he travels to silence and felicity call him not back to the treacheries of earth and the poor petty life of animal man in my vast tranquil spaces let him sleep in harmony with the mighty hush of death where love lies slumbering on the breast of peace and thou go back alone to thy frail world chastise thy heart with knowledge unhood to see thy nature raised into clear living heights the heaven birds view from unimagined peaks for when thou givest thy spirit to a dream soon hard necessity will smite thee awake purest delight began and it must end thou too shalt know thy heart no anchor swinging thy cradle soul mood in eternal seas vain are the cycles of thy brilliant mind renounce forgetting joy and hope and tears thy passionate nature in the bosom profound of a happy nothingness and worldless calm delivered into my mysterious rest one with my fathomless nahil all forget forget thy fruitless spirit's waste of force forget the weary circle of thy birth forget the joy and the struggle and the pain 
the vague spiritual quest which first began when worlds broke forth like clusters of fire flowers and great burning thoughts voyaged to the sky of mind and time and its eons crawled across the vast and souls emerged into mortality but savitri replied to the dark power a dangerous music now thou find'st o death melting thy speech into harmonious pain and flutes alluringly to tired hopes thy falsehoods mingle with sad strains of truth but i forbid thy voice to slay my soul my love is not a hunger of the heart my love is not a craving of the flesh it came to me from god to god returns even in all that life and men have marred a whisper of divinity still is heard a breath is felt from the eternal spheres a loved by heaven and wonderful to man a sweet fire rhythm of passion chants to love there is a hope in its wild infinite cry it rings with callings from forgotten heights and when its strains are hushed to high winged souls in their empyrean its burning breath survives beyond the rapturous core of suns that flame forever pure in skies unseen a voice of the eternal ecstasy one day i shall behold my great sweet world put off the dire disguises of the gods unveil from terror and disrobe from sin a peace we shall draw near our mother's face we shall cast our candid souls upon her lap then shall we clasp the ecstasy we chase then shall we shudder with the long sought god then shall we find heaven's unexpected strain not only is there hope for god its pure the violent and darkened deities leap down from the one breast in rage to find what the white gods had missed they too are safe a mother's eyes are on them and her arms stretched out in love desire her rebel son one who came love and lover and beloved eternal built himself a wondrous field and wove the measures of a marvelous dance there in its circles and its magic turns attracted he arrives repelled he flees in the wild devious promptings of his mind he tastes the honey of tears and puts off joy repenting and as laughter and as wrath and both are a broken music of the soul which seeks out reconciled its heavenly rhyme ever he comes to us across the years bearing his new sweet face that is the old his bliss laughs to us for it calls concealed like a far heard unseen and trancing flute from moonlit branches in the throbbing woods tempting our angry search and passionate pain this guise that the lover seeks and draws our souls he named himself for me guru satyavan for we were man and woman from the first the twin souls born from one undying fire did he not dawn on me in other stars how has he through the thickets of the world pursued me like a lion in the night and come upon me suddenly in the ways and seized me with his glorious golden leap unsatisfied he yearned for me through time sometimes with wrath and sometimes with sweet peace 
desiring in me since first the world began. He rose like a wild wave out of the floods and dragged me helpless into seas of bliss. Out of my curtain past his arms arrive. They have touched me like the soft persuading wind. They have plucked me like a glad and trembling flower and clasped me happily burned in ruthless flame. I too have found him charmed in lovely forms and run delighted to his distant voice and pressed to him past many dreadful bars. If there is a yet happier, greater God, let him first wear the face of Satyavan and let his soul be one with him I love. So let him seek me that I may desire. Only one heart beats within my breast and one God sits there throne. Advance, O death, beyond the phantom beauty of this world, for of its citizens I am not one. I cherish God the fire, not God the dream. But death once more inflicted on her heart the majesty of his calm and dreadful voice, a bright hallucination are thy thoughts. A prisoner held by a spiritual cord of thy own sensuous will, the ardent slave, thou sendest eagle poised to meet the sun, words winged with the red splendor of thy heart. But knowledge dwells not in the passionate heart. The heart's words fall back unheard from wisdom's throne. Vain is thy longing to build heaven on earth, artificer of ideal and idea, mind child of matter in the womb of life, to higher levels persuade this parent's steps, inapt they follow ill the daring guide. But mind, a glorious traveller in the sky, walks lamely on the earth, with footsteps slow. Hardly he can mould the life's rebellious stuff. Hardly can he hold the galloping hooves of sense. His thoughts look straight into the very heavens. They draw their gold from a celestial mine. His acts work painfully a common awe. All thy high dreams were made by matter's mind to solace its dull work in matter's jail, its only house where it alone seems true. A solid image of reality carved out of being to prop the works of time. Matter on its firm earth sits strong and sure. It is the firstborn of created things it stands the last when mind and life are slain, and if it ended, all would cease to be. All else is only its outcome or its phase. Thy soul is a brief flower by the gardener mind created on thy matter's terrain plot. It perishes with the plant on which it grows, for from earth's sap it draws its heavenly hue. Thy thoughts are gleams that pass on matter's verge. Thy life a lapsing wave on matter's sea. A careful steward of truth's limited means, treasuring her founded facts from the squandering star, it tethers mine to the tent posts of sense. To a leaden grey routine clamps life's caprice and ties all creatures with the cords of law. A vessel of transmuting alchemies, a glue that sticks together mind and life. If matter fails, all crumbling cracks and falls. 
all upon matter stands as on a rock. Yet this security and guarantor, pressed for credentials and imposter proves, a cheat of substance where no substance is, an appearance and a symbol and a naught. Its forms have no original right to birth. Its aspect of a fixed stability is a cover of a captive motion swirl, an order of the steps of energy's dance, whose footmarks leave forever the same signs, a concrete face of unsubstantial time, a trickle dotting the emptiness of space, a stable seeming movement without change, yet change arrives, and the last change is death. What seemed most real once is Nahil's show. Its figures are snares that trap and prison the sense. The beginningless void was its artificer. Nothing is there but aspects limbed by chance and seeming shapes of seeming energy. All by death's mercy breathe and live a while. All think and act by the inconscience grace. Addict of the roseate luxury of thy thoughts, turn not thy gaze within thyself to look at visions in the gleaming crystal mind. Close not thy lids to dream the forms of gods. At last to open thy eyes, consent and see the stuff of which thou and the world are made. Inconscient in the dumb, inconscient void, inexplicably a moving world sprang forth. A while secure, happily insensible. It could not rest content with its own truth. For something on its nescient breast was born, condemned to see and know, to feel and love. It watched its acts, imagined a soul within. It groped for truth and dreamed of self and God. When all unconscious was, then all was well. I, death, was king and kept my regal state, designing my unwilled, unerring plan, creating with a calm, insentient heart. In my sovereign power of unreality, obliging nothingness to take a form, infallibly my blind, unthinking force, making by chance a fixity like fate, by whim the formulas of necessity, founded on the hollow ground of the inane, the sure bizarrery of nature's scheme. I curved the vacant ether into space, a huge expanding and contracting breath harbored the fires of the universe. I struck out the supreme original spark and spread its sparse ranged armies through the inane, manufactured the stars from the occult radiances. Marshal the platoons of the invisible dance. I formed earth's beauty out of atom and gas and built from chemic plasm the living man. Then thought came in and spoiled the harmonious world. Matter began to hope and think and feel. Tissue and nerve bore joy and agony. The inconscient cosmos strove to learn its task. An ignorant personal God was born in mind and to understand invented reason's law. The impersonal was dropped back to man's desire. A troubled rock the great world's blind still heart. And nature lost her wide immortal calm. Thus came this warped, incomprehensible scene of souls 
enmeshed in life's delight and pain, and matter, sleep, and mind's mortality, of beings in nature's prison waiting death, and consciousness left in seeking ignorance, and evolution's slow arrested plan. This is the world in which thou most astray in the tangled pathways of the human mind, in the issueless circling of thy human life, searching for thy soul and thinking God is here. But where is room for soul or place for God in the brute immensity of a machine? A transient breath thou takest for thy soul, born from a gas, a plasm, a sperm, a gene, a magnified image of man's mind for God, a shadow of thyself thrown upon space. Interposed between the upper and nether void, thy consciousness reflects the world around in the distorting mirror of ignorance or upward turns to catch imagined stars. Or if a half-truth is playing with the earth, throwing its light on a dark, shadowy ground, it touches only and leaves a luminous smudge. Immortality thou claimest for thy spirit, but immortality for imperfect man, a god who hurts himself at every step, would be a cycle of eternal pain. Wisdom and love thou claimest as thy right, but knowledge in this world is error's mate, a brilliant procurer of nescience, and human love a posturer on earth's stage who imitates with woe a fairy dance. An extract pressed from hard experience, man's knowledge cast in the barrels of memory has the harsh sever of a mortal draught, a sweet secretion from the erotic glands, flattering and torturing the burning nerves. Love is a honey and poison in the breast, drunk by it as the nectar of the gods. Earth's human wisdom is no great proud power, and love no gleaming angel from the skies. If they aspire beyond earth's dullard air, arriving sunwards with frail waxen wings, how high could reach that forced unnatural flight? But not on earth can divine wisdom reign, and not on earth can divine love be found. Heaven born, only in heaven can they live, or else there too perhaps they are shining dreams. Nay, is not all thou art and doest a dream? Thy mind and life are tricks of matter's force. If thy mind seems to thee a radiant sun, if thy life runs a swift and glorious stream, this is the illusion of thy mortal heart, dazzled by a ray of happiness or light. Important to live, by their own right divine, convinced of their brilliant unreality, when their supporting ground is cut away, these children of matter into matter die. Even matter vanishes into energy's vague, and energy is a motion of old naught. How shall the ideal's unsubstantial hues be painted stiff on earth's vermilion blur, a dream within a dream come doubly true. How shall the willow the wisp become a star? The ideal is a malady of thy mind, a bright delirium of thy speech and thought, a strange wine of beauty lifting thee to false sight. A noble fiction of thy yearnings made, the human imperfection it must share. 
its forms in nature disappoint the heart and never shall it find its heavenly shape and never can it be fulfilled in time o soul misled by the splendor of thy thoughts o earthly creature with thy dream of heaven obey resign and still the earthly law accept the brief light that falls upon thy days take what thou canst of life's permitted joy submitting to the ordeal of fate's scourge suffer what thou must of toil and grief and care bashal approach silencing thy passionate heart my long calm night of everlasting sleep there into the hush from which thou camest retire